Intel UHD Graphics 730. This iGPU was first introduced in 2021 as basic graphics solution for display outputs. Nowadays, you'll mostly find it on LJ1700 i3 and i5 processors. And while there may be multiple variants of this iGPU, they are pretty much identical in terms of their gaming performance. Today, I picked an i5-12400 CPU because it has the most standard version of this UHD 730 graphics. To test it, we'll be using this Asus B760 motherboard with 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM to make sure that we don't run into any bottlenecks. By the way, I try to record this screen with my capture cards, but it seems that none of them are able to record it or even let the signal pass through if they are connected to integrated graphics for whatever reason which means that we'll have to record the gameplay with my camera. So let's not waste any more time and head over to the benchmarks to see what this iGPU can do. Let's begin with Minecraft. We're playing this game at 1080p resolution on the lowest settings, and right off the bat we're getting hundreds of FPS. Now a lot of people might be impressed by this performance, but in reality, it is not that impressive. Minecraft is mostly CPU based game and until you enable ray tracing it won't really stress your GPU all that much. And if we pay close attention to our iGPU usage we'll see that sometimes we are CPU bottlenecked even though we are gaming on an i5-12400 and its iGPU. This is a pure example of how little the game cares about your GPU and how demanding it is on the CPU. After playing for about 10 or so minutes, we averaged around 230 FPS. And in case you decide to play on higher settings, you are welcome to do so because this iGPU is completely capable of handling the higher settings in this game. League of Legends Another popular game that people like to play these days. Now, I knew that this game wasn't that demanding, but I really didn't think that we'd be getting 200 FPS on the high settings at 1080p resolution. It's honestly shocking how easy it is to run, which makes me really happy because not everyone is fortunate enough to own a GPU or even a decent computer itself. So if you're gaming on this UHD 730 integrated graphics, you will still be able to enjoy this game without a problem. And in case you prefer to play Dota 2, this iGPU can handle it as well. But unlike League of Legends, you'll be playing it on the lowest or at the very most medium settings. I chose the lowest settings because higher FPS made the game feel a lot smoother. After playing for about 10 or so minutes, we averaged around 120 FPS. It actually never even went below 80, which is impressive. I thought the FPS would drop to low 60s, because iGPUs generally cannot handle heavy graphical load, which I cannot say about this UHD 730 graphics. The FPS stayed well over 100 most of the times, and sometimes it even went as high as 150. Pretty impressive results if you ask me. Let's see how this iGPU does in shooters. Valorant Similar to the previous games that we've tested so far, Valorant doesn't seem to care too much about our GPU either. On the lowest settings at 1080p resolution, we achieved around 200 FPS on average. I always test this game in deathmatch because it's a good way to stress both the graphics and the processor. And I gotta say, I did not expect to get this much FPS in this game. There were no stutters throughout the whole round and the gameplay was as smooth as it could get. You can quite literally play competitively like this. That's how great of an experience I had in this game. Let's move on to something a bit more demanding. Fortnite. We are running this game in performance mode on the lowest settings at 1080p resolution. Now I knew that we weren't gonna get a stable 60fps at this resolution, but I was still hoping that it would be mostly playable, which it was. If we don't pay attention to the micro stutters, which is quite common in this game, it was honestly an enjoyable gaming experience. At times the fps would drop to high 30s, but most of the time it stayed around 50. Now even though the game was playable like this, I wanna recommend running it either at 720p resolution or at 1080p with 70ish percent resolution scale. I think it will feel a lot smoother when you have a stable 60 plus FPS, especially in a shooter like this. Speaking of shooters, CS2 is next on the list. 
Here I chose the lowest possible settings, turned the upscaling off and set the resolution to 1080p. And I gotta say, I was not expecting a playable experience. I know that 50ish FPS is nothing to boast about, but I was honestly impressed with how playable it actually was. The response time was good enough and I never saw a single starter throughout this 10 minute deathmatch. Halfway through I decided to lower the resolution down to 720p because the game kinda felt like it was a bit too slow. And once I did that, I instantly noticed how much smoother it became. In the end, we averaged around 65 FPS on lower settings at 720p resolution. By the way, I also tried enabling FSR, but it made everything so pixelated that I couldn't even see what I was aiming at, especially if the target was a bit far away. GTA 5 Here I was pretty certain that we were gonna get 60 plus FPS, because this game is less demanding than CS2, and every time I tested a GPU in both of these games, GTA 5 has always performed noticeably better. But I guess that's not gonna be the case for us today. This game just seems to perform a bit better on discrete GPUs. But either way, on the lowest settings at 1080p resolution, we are still getting a solid 40 to 60 FPS. Which is quite playable by the way, and I don't feel like there's a noticeable delay on my comments either. The game is honestly running quite smooth, but in case you wanna get a bit more FPS, you can always lower the resolution down to 720p. Personally, I would rather play at 900p, which is kinda in the middle, because that way we're not sacrificing too many pixels in terms of resolution, and we will still be able to get 60 plus FPS on average. Before we move on to really demanding games, I wanna test our iGPU in World of Warcraft, The War Within. I've been playing this game for many years now, and it seems that it is still popular to this day. Now since this is an MMO, the FPS will vary significantly depending on where you are, so I decided to test it in a dungeon, which is basically where you're gonna be spending most of your time, and it's kinda in the middle in terms of how much the game is gonna be stressing your computer. After a 5 minute run of this dungeon, we averaged around 80 FPS on the lowest settings at 1080p resolution. And like I mentioned, the FPS will vary significantly. For example, when you create your character and enter the world, you might even see 100 plus FPS because of how little is happening on the screen. But if you go into a raid that has 20, 30 or even 40 people in it, the FPS will most likely drop to low 30s, so be mindful of that. MMOs are usually like this, and in case you wanna set up your game for those occasions, there's an option where you can set your desired settings specifically for raids, and whenever you enter a raid, it's gonna apply those settings automatically. The Witcher 3 Here I just chose the lowest possible settings at 1080p resolution and set FSR to balanced. But as you can see, we couldn't even achieve 30 FPS. It was basically unplayable. So I went back into the settings, lowered the resolution down to 720p, and it kinda became somewhat playable. Now 30fps is nothing to be impressed by, but if you're really desperate, I guess you can kinda play it like this. But if I'm being honest, the game was really pixelated cause we were running FSR at 720p and the game wasn't even delivering a stable 30fps in some areas. Overall, we achieved around 34fps on average. In cities and other demanding areas, it was still way under 30 FPS. Cyberpunk is the last game that we'll be testing today. Obviously, we're running the lowest possible settings here. FSR is enabled and it is set to balanced. At first, I tried playing at 1080p resolution, but realized really quickly that it wasn't quite gonna happen. So then I went back to the settings, lowered the resolution down to 720p and set FSR to ultra performance. Now I don't know how noticeable it is through the video, but the game became so pixelated that I could probably count how many pixels were on the screen on my fingers. Obviously, no one in their right mind would call this a playable gaming experience, but all things considered, I think it could have been a lot worse. Whenever there were many things happening on the screen, the FPS would drop all the way down to low 20s, but most of the time it still managed to stay around 30. After running around and fighting for good 20 minutes, we achieved a whopping 31 FPS on average. Overall, I gotta say that this iGPU did way better than I expected. 
especially in the first few games. Obviously, we weren't gonna run games like Cyberpunk at 60fps, but you never know. Maybe the integrated graphics of the next generation will be good enough to give us 60fps in Cyberpunk. Either way, if playing Minecraft, Valorant or many other low demanding games is all that you do, I think you'll be extremely satisfied with this iGPU's gaming performance. But tell me what you think. Were you expecting this kind of performance from UHD 730 graphics? And are you by any chance gaming on such an iGPU? On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.